Hi, my name is Arif Abdul Karim, and I'm a solutions architect uh, supporting uh, CMS here at Databricks. Uh, and today I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges uh, that data teams face when it comes to operationalizing and really seeing the full value from the analytics and, and, and model development. Uh, and then I want to touch on some of the best practices and some of the capabilities that can be applied to address these challenges and, and ultimately enable self-service analytics and, and model development for individual data teams. Before we jump in, I want to talk a little bit about Databricks and, and introduce the company for those who aren't familiar. Uh, Databricks is the data and AI company, and we're the pioneers of, of the Data Lake House, which is a paradigm that's gaining a lot of steam throughout the industry, and, and Databricks kind of originated uh, you know, this, this, this paradigm. Uh, we're also the only cloud native vendor to be named the leader in uh, both uh, Gartner Magic Quadrants, both for database management systems, as well as for data science and machine learning. And we like to highlight this because I think it's, it's a pretty big deal because it really shows the vision of the lake house as being the best of both worlds, uh, the best of uh, the data governance and data management that you would typically look for in a data warehouse, as well as the flexibility and the scalability that you will look for in a data lake and, and build your, your data science and machine learning workloads on top of. Uh, we're the creators of a number of highly successful open source projects, Delta Lake, Apache Spark, and MLflow. Uh, and we also have over 4,000 uh, employees across the globe uh, and more than 7,000 customers globally, including a number in, in the public sector, as you can see here on the right. So to begin, I want to talk a little bit about where modeling teams tend to get stuck. And, and I'm specifically generalizing this to modeling teams and not just talking about machine learning, because I think a lot of these challenges uh, are, are general to, to modeling, um, whether that's uh, rule-based modeling or, or basic statistical analysis or machine learning models. And, and really, when we look at where modeling teams tend to begin, it's, it's at a small scale in a very ad hoc fashion with maybe a handful of models, static data sets, and, and really a bespoke technical stack. And ultimately, you want to get to a point where you can start to put that into production. And that's when you start to have hundreds, maybe even thousands of models. You have data that's changing and models that need to be retrained. And then you want to start to standardize on, on a set of conventions and on a technical stack. And, and really, this, this ideal uh, on the right is, is what will typically be referred to as MLOps. And what I want to do is, is talk a little bit about kind of the Databricks approach to MLOps and, and, and how we, we see this as, as a full solution. So really, when, when we're looking at operationalizing modeling, it, it really requires a, a holistic approach. We have the models themselves, and, and this is only a, one piece of the puzzle. Uh, but before we can even get to modeling, we first have to have data. Uh, so we have to be concerned with access to data, data quality, securing that data, and then assuming that we can get past the, the data hurdle and actually develop those models, we still need to be able to operationalize those models and, and, and eventually uh, deploy those models into various different data applications or online services. So what tends to happen is that each step in this process will be owned by a different data team. So you'll have your data ops team or, or your data engineers, and, and they'll operate in their own silo. And then you'll have your analytics or your modeling teams operating in their own silo. And then you'll have your, your DevOps teams that's responsible for, for actually deploying those models or operationalizing those models. And they're operating in their own silo. And each of these teams will, will kind of have their own set of metrics uh, that they're concerned with. So on the DevOps side, maybe they're concerned with service reliability or uptime. And on the modeling side, they're concerned with the model accuracy. And on the data engineering side, they're concerned with data freshness or data completeness. And these are all really narrow focuses and it kind of lose sight of the, of the big picture. So what we really should care about is, is the center of effectively carrying out its mission. You know, this model is, is being developed for a reason that has to do with the larger mission of, of the center. And that should really be the focus. Uh, but as a result of these silos and, and really kind of the narrow uh, metrics and, and, and quality metrics, we end up, you know, kind of losing sight of, of, of what's really important. 
So to go a little bit more in detail about some of these challenges uh, that result that that are really a result of these silos and how we can address them, um, I'll start off by by touching on uh, the data op side of things, and and that's where we see challenges having to do with actually being able to access data, being able to ensure that that data meets a certain quality. We also see challenges with being able to connect the dots, being able to connect uh, the, the model performance with the actual business metrics. Um, and then we also have, have challenges with things like stale features, and, and that tends to impact the model performance. So on the right side, we see some of the approaches or some of the best practices, specifically the data-centric approach uh, to being able to address these challenges. Uh, so when we're looking at, you know, issues with, with data access, uh, the kind of data centric approach is understanding that data access is key to model development. So ensuring that we can provide a governed way to be able to access that data and to be able to share that data, not just within a single team, but across teams and across offices. And, and then when we look at being able to, to connect the dots, uh, that's where we want to ensure that there's a live link between the business metrics and the model performance. And then looking at kind of the data quality issues that that arise as a result of the data scientists and the data engineers working in their own silo, this is this can be addressed by providing essentially a single platform where both of these personas can kind of collaborate and interact together for the entire life cycle from data prep to exploratory data analysis. Uh, and then also we, we can address the, the still feature issue with, with capabilities like an in-platform feature store, uh, which uh, Databricks provides. And then when we look at the model app side, um, we see challenges there. We see things like uh, being able to reproduce the models, uh, again, being able to share the models. Uh, we see issues uh, associated with being able to manage the metadata um, that comes from the model development process. Uh, and then also just being able to manage the, the, the life cycle of, of hundreds and, as I mentioned, sometimes thousands of models. Uh, and when we're looking at kind of the, the model shareability or, or being able to, to provide access to models throughout different teams, that can be addressed by, by starting to standardize on open formats and, and really removing some of the proprietary or, or kind of closed formats that, that results in uh, a limited uh, uh, collaboration capability. Uh, and then also being able to empower through various different capabilities, which I'll touch on shortly, being able to empower different uh, teams to be able to quickly and easily uh, train models. And then also frameworks like MLflow, which I'll touch on as well, uh, provides a, a framework for being able to log experiments and the artifacts and the metadata that comes from that model development process, uh, and then also a way to be able to register and manage the life cycle associated with a number of models at scale. And then finally, when we look at the DevOps side of things, that DevOps typically tends to be kind of the bottleneck um, where the data teams have to go to, to the DevOps team every time there's a minor change and vice versa because the, the uh, model, the DevOps teams typically don't really understand the data itself, they, they have to go back to the data engineers or sometimes the data scientists. Um, and, and this kind of back and forth uh, really kind of slowed, slows down time to value. Um, so one of the ways that this is addressed is, is again, through frameworks like MLflow being able to provide world-class model scoring and deployment options, as well as, as, well as built-in data and model observability uh, for self-service uh, for a lot of the issues that, that arise that typically you would have to go to DevOps for. Um, and then being able to scale impact by sharing results um, and being able to easily deploy data applications. So now when we put all of this together, um, really what Databricks does is it provides really a, a single platform for every step in this model development process from the data side, the data ops side, the model ops side to the DevOps side and capabilities uh, that really allow you to, to address some of these challenges in, in each of these buckets. And I wanna to touch on a couple of those capabilities, although we won't have time to, to go into a ton of detail on each and every one of them. So the first one I wanted to touch on is, is kind of 
expanding um you know who can be involved in 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 the uh data analytics and in the model development life cycle uh and often what we see particularly at cms are users who have a great deal of business knowledge and, and subject matter expertise but maybe aren't as technical aren't as comfortable with coding um and databrook traditionally is known as a as a coding environment but what we provide through our integration with tools like bamboo lib is, is the ability to be able to allow non-coders to be able to contribute to that process doing things like data exploration data prep and data transformation in a no code type of way also when it comes to the data access the data acquisition and transformation process tools like delta live tables uh, provides a declarative way to be able to build out etl pipelines greatly simplifying this process and also giving you capabilities like built-in data quality metrics and, and lineage uh, capabilities as well and then finally on the machine learning side again databricks is kind of known as a as a code first environment and it's great for those who are comfortable coding providing capabilities in multiple languages and collaboration capabilities built in visualization inside of notebooks which traditional data scientists are typically comfortable with but also for those who you know maybe want to accelerate that process whether they're comfortable with coding or those who are less comfortable with coding there's you know low code solutions like auto ml uh which are which is a glass box solution so it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It, it gives you a point and click way to be able to quickly develop a model and at least get a baseline model quickly. But then it also provides you with the code um, so that you can then you know, inspect what was, uh, what was automatically created and then be able to change some of the hyperparameters to, to further be able to kind of refine and, and optimize that model. And then finally, I mentioned MLflow, uh, which really provides capabilities for the entire uh, model lifecycle management, uh, starting from the model development to being able to provide capabilities for model tracking, a model registry, and then ultimately uh, model deployment. So when we put this all together, what you have is a single platform that provides capabilities for every step in this model development process so that now individual data teams are kind of empowered to be able to have self-service capabilities when it comes to data prep data exploration model development training and then ultimately model deployment so that they can really speed up time to value and, and remove the bottleneck of, of operating in individual data silos so uh for those who, who want to dive into this topic deeper, uh, feel free to reach out to myself, Arif Abdul Karim, or to my counterpart on the business side, Bob Kilker, and we'll be more than happy to provide a deep dive and to touch on some of the capabilities that we didn't have time to touch on today. Thank you.